the astronauts to read out the gravitational effect of those planets. Hi, I'm Chris, and this is NASA Now. Have you ever watched fireworks and noticed that you see the flash before you hear the sound? You probably have heard that light travels faster than sound, but how fast does sound travel? And how does sound travel through the atmosphere? We'll talk with a NASA expert who will help us crack the sound barrier question. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening in NASA now. Supersonic aircraft flying over a special test area of Edwards Air Force Base in California are making quite a racket to help crack down on noise pollution. NASA Dryden Research Center is collecting and analyzing data on sonic booms for a special project called SCAMP, or Super Boom Caustic Analysis and Measurement Program. The research will be used by scientists and engineers to design low boom supersonic aircraft that will create less noise pollution. This is all part of NASA's Green Aviation Initiative to develop commercial and military aircraft that are faster and more efficient with less impact on the environment. Now let's take a look at the past. October 14, 1947, world-renowned test pilot Captain Chuck Yeager does what no human has done before. Jaeger breaks the sound barrier, piloting the XS-1 test vehicle, which means he is the first person ever to fly faster than the speed of sound. The speed of sound in air at sea level is right around 761 miles per hour, or 1225 kilometers per hour. The speed of sound varies depending on altitude and temperature. Imagine traveling almost 23 times faster than the speed of sound, approximately 17,500 miles per hour or 28,163 kilometers an hour. That's the speed necessary for a spacecraft to enter into low Earth orbit. So how did NASA shuttle fleet during its 30 years of missions safely return 789 astronauts and cosmonauts back to Earth? To help us answer this question, we caught up with guidance, navigation, and flight controls engineer George Hatcher at Kennedy Space Center. When you separate from the International Space Station and when you're docked with it, both of you are still going 25 times faster than a speeding bullet coming out of a rifle barrel. It's because we've given this vehicle 17,500 miles per hour worth of momentum just to get it into orbit so that it can match up with the International Space Station. All of that kinetic energy has to be dissipated before we can fly it like an airplane because we need to get it down to, say for instance, Mach 5, which is the threshold of hypersonic flight, before we can start nosing over and flying like an airplane. And we fly belly first because it pre presents the largest area possible to maximize the drag so that we can slow down with efficiency. The speed of sound is essentially how long does it take for one molecule of air to bounce into another one so that information in the form of pressure waves can propagate throughout the air. When the vehicle moves 25 times faster than the air can talk to itself, when this molecule gets hit, the next one doesn't even know the shuttle's coming. It doesn't have time for that molecule to bounce into the other one before the shuttle has barreled through it. It, in fact, hits the molecules so hard that it dissociates them. There's enough energy, kinetic energy, of the vehicle hitting the atmosphere that the electrons are ripped clean of their nuclei. When you tear electrons off of their nuclei, you end up with a fourth state of matter, which we call plasma. Plasma in nature really only exists on the sun. So if you can imagine how hot the sun is, that can give you an idea of the environment that the shuttle sees on the way back in the atmosphere. The reason that we have all of these tiles on the bottom of the vehicle, and the reason that they must withstand temperatures of hundreds of degrees, is because now you start to impact the upper atmosphere. And even though it's very sparse, the molecules are very far apart, the vehicle is doing what we call Mach 25, 25 times faster than the speed of sound. 
And when we start flying like a plane, it's flying faster than an SR-71. Twin sonic booms heralding Atlantis' arrival. It's flying faster than the cruising speed of a spy plane that can go from LA to New York in under an hour. This is the reason that when you watch that map as it screams in, it can enter the atmosphere over the Pacific and in a matter of minutes land in Florida. So we're talking many, many times faster than any kind of passenger jet that you would travel on. Did you know that you don't need a plane or a space shuttle to break the sound barrier? The crack of a whip is produced when the section of the whip moves faster than the speed of sound and creates a sonic boom, which is measured in pounds per square foot of overpressure. Overpressure is the amount of the increase above the normal atmospheric pressure that surrounds us. Normal air pressure at sea level is right around 14.7 pounds per square inch. Now you know. Now it's time to check out what's up. Fall is in the air and that means we are likely to see the Orionid meteor shower. Every year around the same time, the Orionid meteor shower averages around 13 meteors per hour from October 18th to the 26th. Teachers, now you can bring the thrill of speed into your classroom. Check out this new lesson. Coming this year to the virtual campus is a new lesson called Linear Equations NASA Connect Breaking Barriers. Your students will try their hand at designing and testing a balloon X-1 rocket model. For more information, visit the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus and look in the lesson library. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Join us next time when we see there's more to the moon than just a lot of dust. We'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.